So I had a full day in the San Juans, located in southwest Colorado. I thought it would be interesting to explore some of the rich mining history in this area. The fun started when I found myself on Highway 550. It's an incredible stretch of road between the towns of Ure and Silverton, originally built in 1883 by miners. It's called the Million Dollar Highway, and no one knows exactly why. Many speculate it was because of the exorbitant cost to modernize this road back in the 1920s. The strip was originally thought impassable, and even now many choose to skip this drive due to its steep cliffs and sharp turns and the absence of guardrails. To other people, that's the draw, combined with the incredible scenery. So I mentioned Ure, Colorado, incredible town. One of the few mining towns that never reached the ghost town category. It was settled in 1876, but took a significant hit back in 1893 during the Silver Crash. It's named after Ute Chief Ure, and it became a supply outlet and a social hub for many of the local mining districts. Back in its day, it had all the trappings of a, a Western town, the active nightlife and hardworking men moving the supplies up and hauling the minerals down from the Red Mountains. My first stop was the Silver Cloud Mine. The road was short on the map and it started off very smooth. However, shortly into the drive, I realized high clearance was necessary. Run up as far as I can. So just when I was about to bail out on this thing, I noticed there's a trail that goes up along the perimeter of this canyon, adjacent to the road itself. Instead of driving up, we're just gonna hike up, try to make our way up to the Silver Cloud Mine. Here we go. Back down at the water level, and uh, we don't have anything to work on here. So it's slow moving, it's all rocks, loose rocks, but uh, I tell you what, the beauty definitely makes up for the difficulty. This is gorgeous back here. Wow, would you check that out? I haven't found a mine structure back here, but this is definitely the shaft. This is the first time I've ever seen a mine shaft without a protective gating over it. I would love to go back in there, but it's flooded with water and it's very dangerous. The water's not too deep. It is so tempting to get in there and explore it. But you can see there's a wooden brace right there supporting one of the walls. Check that out. Wow. That's impressive. So I see some tailings way up on the hill. I'm going to try to make my way up there. That's a little challenging, though. I thought I could just work up this hill and make it to that road and then cut over to the tailings. But I found myself a virtual maze of bushes here. And the big question always at this point is, do you turn around and retrace your steps or do you keep going and hope you hit the road if the road's even up there anymore? Oh man. All right, I'm gonna try to go up a little further. We're going back. I'm not done. I'm determined to keep going. But this is as far as I'm going to proceed. There's a platform right here. The tailings are right there that I spoke of. I'm on ground level with them. I'll look around, see if I can see any remnants of the old mine. Silver Cloud is at 11,400 feet, and the primary mining mineral was lead. 
Beyond that, there's really nothing I could discover regarding the history of this mine. First of all, would you check out these aspen? Headed back to the road. Yeah, this will be an easier walk. Back to the car now. Time to go back. Dominating the landscape in this area are the majestic Red Mountains. It's rather obvious how they derive their name. From a geological perspective, it's due to the iron ore rocks that cover the surface. Roads built by the old miners still scar the landscape, but being able to drive through this scenery is indeed breathtaking. The balance between preserving and enjoying creation is one that will forever be debated. I was blessed to hit the Aspens in their peak glory. It's a special treat as I drove the million dollar highway to the next mining location. The Eldorado mine goes all the way back to 1893 with the creation of the Treasury Tunnel, as it's called. Miners would gather at this very trestle and ride underground trams to their workstations. The tunnel is basically a network of tunnels, nearly 100 miles long and 1,700 feet below the surface. The trestle itself was used to move ore from the mine to the concentrating mill. Near the trestle is a small settlement of homes that were purchased and moved here from the bankrupt Sunnyside Mine in Eureka. Ten homes total used to house the employees. Right now, these 100-year-old structures are being remodeled. If you visit, please respect this site. Off in the distance, you can see the head frame of the Yankee Girl Mine. Operation started when prospector John Robinson discovered a pipe of silver ore and staked a claim. Unlike most of the local mines, Yankee Girl had a vertical shaft that descended 1,200 feet. As the sun was setting, I drove by this beauty in Chattanooga. So this is gonna be our last stop today. I was told, get that sun out of my face. I was told there's a hidden hot spring back here. Let me see if I can find it. First sight of some water, it's cold. What is that? Whoa, guys, this is amazing. And we're gonna keep this one a secret. So for smelling all. You know what I'm thinking. This might be the craziest thing I've ever done. Nice. This is nice. <laughs> I'm liking this. Up in the hills, total privacy, the secret hidden bathtub. San Juan Mountains! So I'd like to spend more time in this hot tub, but it's gonna get chilly and I gotta set up my campsite. From the beautiful San Juan Mountain, San Juan National Forest in Colorado, we say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. And remember here at America's Parks, there might not be room for you in this hot tub, but there is room for you on every National Park adventure. Take care.